Hey guys, what's up? You're watching TechClick and today we're going to be looking at some of the best budget gaming mice that you can get in early 2021. When it comes to gaming mice, there are so many options nowadays and it seems like almost every other week we're getting something new. And with all this competition, we're getting some pretty amazing gaming mice for cheaper than ever before. There will be links to all the mice in this video in the description down below if you'd like to purchase any of them. And as of the time that this video goes live, they are all $50 or less. Quick disclaimer, the prices of some of these mice are subject to change. Also, I do personally own a variation of each mouse on this list and I've either reviewed or played extensively with each mouse. What I mean by that is, for example, I do own the Model D minus, but I do not own the standard Model D. It's important to me that I keep my recommendations as transparent as possible. Regardless, I do my research into each one of these mice and read or watch reviews to help you guys find the best deals possible and the advantages and disadvantages of each mouse. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Starting off our list, we have the HyperX Pulsefire Haste. This mouse comes in at the $50 price point and weighs in at a light 59 grams. The haste has an ambi shape for medium sized hands, but I also had a really great time using this mouse and I would consider my hands to be on the smaller size at around 17 by 9 centimeters. Checking out the dimensions, that is a length of 124 millimeters, a height of 38 millimeters, and a width of 67 millimeters. The haste also uses the Hyperflex cable, which is their take on a paracord cable and it is actually one of the best stock mouse cables that I've used. It's incredibly light, flexible, and has a low point of tension. The mouse feet are made from 100% PTFE material and were also smooth on any cloth mouse pad that I tried it on. The sensor used here is the Pixar 3335 sensor and from my experience this sensor performed just as well as any other proven industry standard sensors like the Pixar 3360 or 3389 sensors. It uses TTC golden micro switches which are a nice break from the usual Omron switches that we see used on a lot of gaming mice nowadays and they're rated for 60 million clicks which is higher than what we usually see from your 20 or even 50 mil Omrons. As of right now the Pulsefire Haste is only available in one colorway which is a matte black but I'm sure that over time time, HyperX will begin to release new colorways of the haste. As for buttons, you get six here, mouse one and two, the scroll wheel button, the two side buttons, and the DPI button under the scroll wheel. Side buttons are medium in size, easy to hit, and the positioning is good as well. My preferred grip style for this mouse are fingertip and palm mainly because of the low shape and overall profile of the mouse, and there is a lack of support in the back for a claw grip. Also, there is software available for this mouse, and that is the Ingenuity software, but strangely enough, this is a Microsoft Store exclusive, so keep Keep that in mind if you plan to get your hands on this mouse. Overall, the Pulsefire Haste has seriously impressed me and it's become my main wired FPS mouse. The low weight combined with the great cable, feet, and low profile shape make this mouse a winner for me. And the fact that it comes in right at our $50 price limit is really the cherry on top. Next on our list, we have the Razer Viper Mini. The Viper Mini comes in at only $40 and weighs a mere 61 grams. It's designed for people with medium to smaller hands and it uses an ambi design that makes it comfortable for right or left handed users. However, it only has side buttons on the left side of the mouse. In total, the mouse has six buttons, mouse one and two, the scroll wheel button, the two side buttons, and the DPI button. Measuring its dimensions, it has a length of 118 millimeters, a height of 38 millimeters, and a width of 53 millimeters. The Viper Mini uses Razer Speedflex cable, which is a bit stiff, but overall is a good paracord type cable. The sensor used here is the Pixar 3359 sensor, which isn't a common sensor, but as far as tracking performance, I never had any issues with it. There is a known issue with the liftoff distance being high, but this can now be remedied by updating the firmware and going into the Razer Synapse software for the mouse and using the mouse mat calibration tool. The switches used under mouse one and two are Razer's optical mouse switches that they claim boast an impressive 70 million click life expectancy. And while I can't back up that claim since I haven't personally clicked my Viper Mini that many times, when it comes to the clicks themselves, they are tactile, crisp, and feel like solid mouse switches. My preferred grip style with this mouse is fingertip and claw because of the size of the Viper Mini and even with my smaller hands and palm grip my fingers will hang off the front of the mouse. Overall, the Viper Mini is one of the best mice that you can get for under $40 and easily gets my recommendation for fingertip and claw grip users looking to try something new. Third on our list, we have the glorious Model O and Model O Minus. And while yes, many PC gamers already know or at least heard of the Model O mouse, I believe that it is popular for a good reason and that is its great price and performance. Even in early 2021, the Model O is still a great option for anyone looking to get a gaming mouse for $50. Both the Model O and O Minus have an ambi shape with the regular Model O being designed for medium to larger hands and the O minus being made for medium to smaller hands. The Model O weighs in at 67 grams for the matte version while the O minus weighs in at just 58 grams. 
both of mice use the glorious cheese skates and ascendant cords which have been revised to be even better than they were on earlier copies of the model o the g skates are made from 100 percent ptfe material and they are really good mouse feet the ascendant cord while it is light and flexible isn't the best dock cable that i've used but it is still good both mice use the pixar 3360 sensor which is a trusted sensor and they also use arm mount switches rated for 20 million clicks both mice come in matte and glossy variants as well as black and white color options Again here, you get 6 buttons total and the Model O has a very safe shape that makes it work for basically every grip style. There is software available from Glorious website for each mouse and it's user friendly and simple to use. Overall, the Model O and O- are great mice and Glorious has kept their prices low even with their massive success. These mice have proven to be a hit with many gamers including myself and I think the versatile shape and value that Glorious offers is what makes these mice awesome even to this day. Next on our list, we have the Glorious Model D and Model D-. I'm not going Going to go into the same depth as I did with some of the other mice on this list simply because the Model D is basically just an ergo shaped Model O. The feet, cables, switches, and sensor are the same on both the Model O and Model D mice. A key difference here is the weight with the regular matte Model D being about 68 grams and the matte Model D minus being about 61 grams. Just know that if you liked what you got with the Model O or Model O minus but wanted a change to a more ergonomic shape then this is what you should pick up right here. Before we get into the second half of this list, if you haven't already hit that subscribe button because only about 3% of the people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. By being subscribed, it'll make sure that you don't miss out on any new reviews or deal videos like this one, and I would really appreciate it. You guys are the best, thanks for watching, and now, back to the video. Moving right along to the 7th and 8th mice on our list, we have the Cooler Master MM710 and MM711. The main differences between these two mice is that the MM711 has RGB, while the MM710 has no RGB. B. Also, the MM710 weighs less at just 53 grams, while the MM711 weighs 60 grams. And finally, the MM710 costs anywhere from $40 to $45, while the MM711 costs around $45 to $55, depending on Amazon pricing. Besides those differences, both mice have the same flexible ultraweave cable, and both use the industry standard Pixar 3389 sensor. Both the MM710 and MM711 offer glossy and matte variants, and have a black or white colorway. These mice have a really small but tall ambi shape that makes it an amazing mouse for claw grip. You get plenty of support in the back and both mice are still great for fingertip grip. The MM710 and 711 can both be configured by the Master Plus software that is one of the cleaner and better user interfaces in a mouse software. The quick rundown is, if you need RGB and are willing to pay extra for it as well as gain a few grams, then the MM711 is the mouse for you. Otherwise, the MM710 is cheaper and weighs less than the MM711. By the way, the MM710 and 7-Eleven are the mice I usually recommend for anyone who has already used the Model O and are looking for a change in shape, especially if they're a fan of claw grip and the Model O is a bit too flat and safe for you. Next on our list, we have the HK Gaming Mira M and S. The main difference here is size and weight with the Mira M being designed for medium to larger hands and the Mira S being designed for smaller to medium hands. Even with there being a noticeable difference in size, the Mira M manages to only be 2 more grams than the Mira S weighing only 63 grams. Both use the Pixar 3360 sensor and 50mm Omron switches. They're both offered in a variety of colorways like your usual black and white, but there's also pumpkin, lavender, rose quartz, and even more. The colorway you choose will affect the price with the Mira M going anywhere from $45 to $60 and the Mira S going around $40 to $50. They do have the same paracord type cable that is a little stiff, but for the most part is decent. As for the feet, they are kind of thin and don't take up much space, but overall they get the job done. My preferred grip style for the Mira S is palm and claw, and for the Mira M with its larger, more versatile shape is palm, claw, and fingertip. Overall, I think the Mira S and Mira M are severely underrated and don't get the love they deserve. I ended up maining my Mira S for about two months after my review because I love the shape so much. I think this mouse is a bit of a sleeper hit as I've now seen a lot more people begin to review it, talk about it, and use it as opposed to when it originally launched. With the second to last mouse on our list, we have the Drevo Falcon. This mouse is one of the more budget friendly mice on this list, fairly priced at $40 flat. It has a very comfortable larger ambi shape that makes it amazing for a palm and claw grip, but also found it to be good for fingertip grip as well. It weighs 70 grams and it has 6 buttons total. 
I feel like they underplayed how good the cable was because they just call it an ultra soft cable, but it really is an exceptional cable considering the price. It's light, it's flexible, and stayed out of my way when gaming. They're using the top of the line Pixar 3389 sensor, and the Falcon comes in either a black or white matte finish. The weakest point of this mouse is the feet they used on the bottom of the mouse, they're average at best. And while they aren't bad enough that I wouldn't recommend the mouse, I just wanted to mention that they could be improved or you may want to eventually replace them down the line with some better mouse feet. Overall, if you're looking for a larger, more comfortable mouse on a budget, look no further than the Drevo Falcon. Last on our list, we have the G203 and G305 mouse, which is essentially the wireless version of the G203. I'm only going to go into depth on the G203, but both mice are usually $40 or under. In fact, the main reason why I decided to put the G203 on this list is because of its incredibly low price of $15 that it regularly goes on sale for. Again, that is the sale price. This makes it probably one of the best gaming mice that you can get for $15 or less, and I genuinely think it's good, even if you can only get it for around $25 to $30. That being said, the price of the G203 fluctuates a lot. It's an ambi egg-shaped mouse designed for people with smaller to medium hands. It weighs about 85 grams and my preferred grip styles are fingertip and claw. It comes in four colorways, black, white, blue, and lilac, all of which are in a matte finish. The feet, while they are made from a PTF material, aren't too impressive. The cable is a rubber cable, but for this price, it isn't uncommon. The sensor is an optical sensor, although I couldn't find the name for the actual sensor used here, but from my experience, the sensor performance here is great and I had no issues with it. Overall, when you can get the G203 on sale for $15, it's one of the best mice you can get for that price point, but regardless, it's a solid budget mouse pick. So that's going to wrap up our best budget gaming mice for early 2021 video. I hope you guys were able to find at least one mouse that you were looking for, or at least enjoyed the video. Like I mentioned earlier, all the links to these mice will be down below in the description. If you enjoyed the video, if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button since it really does help out the channel. And if you're new here, I make all types of content on gaming tech. So if that sounds interesting to you, consider checking out the channel and subscribing. If you want to talk to me or ask me any questions, I go live on Twitch at ClickC3. We talk about tech, play games, and have a good time. And if you want more content from me, I have a TikTok where I post tons of tech-related content, like more mice, keyboards, monitors, and a whole lot more. And finally, I just recently launched my gaming channel, and you can check out my first two videos. I'll also link that down below in the description. Like always, you guys are awesome. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.